All right, Filipinos in the Six, we're here with Carlos from YTV, the legend. A man I used to watch when I was a young, young boy. <laughs> I'm old now, older now, but early 2000s, I was watching you on TV. Yeah, Channel yeah. 25, come That's home it. after school. Yeah. Right before Pokemon or, you know, whatever, <laughs> whatever we were watching. Hey, Arnold. Right in the middle you know? of everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I was watching you, man. The two Appreciate Filipinos it. I knew on TV were Carlos and Rufio. And Rufio. And it's a trip to be in the same room as this guy right now. We got to get Dante Bosco for you guys. Please do. Get, that would get be Prince amazing. Zuko over here. That would be amazing. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, so what you been up to, man? What's new with you? Where What's have new? you been? I am. <laughs> Where have you been? Where have you been? Because that's what everyone's been asking. Where have you been? <laughs> everyone's been asking. Uh, I've man. been around. I've been doing, I mean, I haven't stopped working. So I've been on ET Canada yeah. for the last five years. I was doing YTV on a steady clip before that for a very long time, since 2002. Um, and that's it. And living life, just enjoying things. For real. That's I it. Feel that. Yeah. I feel that. You have kids or anything? You're married I have or what? Two kids. Oh, and what? You I do? I didn't know that. I did Surprise. not know that. I yeah. did not know that. <laughs> that's crazy. Wow. Congrats. Yeah, that's thank amazing. you. Thank you. It's amazing. So, how was it like being Filipino and in the industry like that? Because we didn't see many. No, we so how not. how was it like? How was it just being there on a day to day basis? Like, um, I mean, I loved what I did every day. Yeah, I always loved going to work. I loved working with Shug. I loved working with our producers. The stuff that we did was always fun. Uh, I like to sprinkle in a little bit of my experience of being Filipino every now and again yeah. into that show. Um, but as far as like relating that to other Filipinos that might have been in the industry or not in the industry, it was kind of. Uh, a bit of an island on my own, I mm -hmm. suppose. Just because, again, like like you only saw two dudes on TV. Yeah, yeah. I saw, you know, before me was PJ Phil, Phil Guerrero, yep, yep. who was the other Filipino guy, and he was a host of YTV before I was a host of YTV. Okay, so that okay. was the dude that I saw. So it was not, there was not like, um, there were not a lot of opportunities to feel represented back okay, then. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, wow, nice. And then I was so. And you from where? Where were you born again? You said Cal I was. I was born in Manila. Manila. Oh, you were born in the Philippines. I was born in the Philippines. Oh wow! Yes, I was born in Manila. Came to Canada uh, when I was very young, like three. And we landed in Vancouver, and I lived in Vancouver. Then we moved to Calgary, and lived in Calgary. Wow! And we moved to Burlington, Ontario, which is just west to here. Mm -hmm. And then that's where I did most of my growing up until I moved to the city. Wow. And yeah. how different is it here compared to Burlington over there? Compared to Burlington? Well, I, I moved back actually. Oh, okay, okay. So it's, um, I know, I, the experience of both has been part of my life since I was a teenager. So I don't know how different, like, like going back there when I was a kid, like leaving the city when I would go see my friends here or whatever, mm -hmm. and going back home, it'd just be like hanging out at my parents' house and then going to school and seeing my friends there. True. And then when I worked here, it was just living here. That's it. So like busier. Yeah, a lot of yeah. great things going on here. True. Obviously, lots of fun things to do. And then when we um, were starting a family, my wife and I were starting a family, we just kind of were like, well, why don't we go try living out there? Nice. And so we did. And it's nice. great. It's yeah. great, eh? You yeah. like it over there? Is there a lot of Filipinos out there in Burlington? There is, right? Uh, there's a few. Yeah. There's definitely more than when I was growing up. Oh, yeah. That's true, true. <laughs> true. Yeah, for sure. True, true. But it's good. Like, it's peaceful. It's kind of what we needed at the time. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm definitely used to it now. I was very, very much into life downtown here when we left. Yeah. Um, so it was a hard adjustment, but I'm very much into the way it is now. Nice, nice. It's great. It's like nature. Yeah, animals yeah, yeah. everywhere. For real, for real. <laughs> yeah, That's how it is real. over there. Eh? Yeah. Who were your uh, influences growing up? And like, what got you? What even got you into YTV? Uh, yeah. Okay. So I was really into. I mean, I was into a bunch of different things growing up. But I started off in the arts, like as a, an artist first. So I drew a lot first, okay, and I thought wow. I was going to be an animator. <laughs> so my influences then were like the animators and the. Uh, and the comic book artists I loved, like Jim Lee, wow. and Marvel Comics, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and then I also was dancing. So I started tap dancing at the age of eight years old. So then my influences became like Fred Astaire and Gene Kelly, the Nicholas Brothers. Gregory Hines was my hero, number wow. one hero. Um, but I also grew up like I love Bruce Lee movies. <laughs> so and, and speaking of like, you know, going back to when you said, oh, I only saw two Filipino guys. Yeah. I didn't see, like, there weren't Filipino guys in movies that I knew, yeah, really, yeah. not not North American movies, mm -hmm. and I didn't watch any movies in Tagalog growing up, like, I True. didn't know a lot of those shows and those yeah, programs, yeah. 
So my connection to like even any idea of like Asia yeah. was Bruce Lee first <laughs> and foremost, <laughs> yeah, as yeah. wild as that is. True. So I grew up that like Bruce Lee, Jackie Chan, like I love all those action movies, that sort of thing. Nice, nice. And so it's a sort of an amalgamation of all those things, um, which became what I thought of as like the lead into what, what being in entertainment would be like. Yeah, yeah. So who mm. thought like, how did you find YTV and how did YTV find you? I was going to the Randolph Academy. It was, okay, it was yeah, called Randolph yeah, Academy for, yeah. for March back then, but Randolph. And um, they came around and were holding auditions in our last term. So wow. the last several months there in school was when we were allowed to actually audition for shows. So okay, I was auditioning okay. for theater. I was auditioning for commercials. I was already shooting music videos. And uh, YTV came around and they were looking for like stand-up comedians and like improv people, that yeah. sort of thing. And I wasn't really that... Like I was a dancer. Yeah, yeah. Um, but like I auditioned, it worked out, got a call back, it worked out. I had a wow. meeting with the EP, and then I started my first day of work right after our grad dinner. So wow. I grad dinner, YTV, and then that's it. It just took off from there. That's it, man. That's how it happened. Yeah. That's crazy. Wow. So you, do you speak Tagalog? I don't speak Tagalog. No. Your parents speak Tagalog? A little bit. I a can little understand bit. it. I can yeah. broken, broken up a little bit. Like, like there are things that when people say them, I'm like, Oh, I know what that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if yeah. someone tells me to go get something, like, oh, I know what that is. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Thank yeah, you yeah. very much. Um, That's funny, man. But no, we, you know, we weren't, um, my parents spoke a few languages. My dad spoke like five languages. He taught himself so many languages. But uh, they, back in the day when I was growing up, the thinking was kind of like they wanted us to learn English so we wouldn't be behind in school. So it was like, okay, you'll speak English at home. Yeah. You'll go to school and you speak English and you won't be behind. But I mean, the thinking is different now. Yeah. You know, multilingual kids yep. do great and their brains develop in a different way. And that's kind of like what I wish I had growing mm -hmm. up. But uh, no, so I've been trying to catch up a little bit. Yeah, I'm yeah. trying to learn a little bit. Okay, I have yeah, a yeah. lot of opportunity to speak it. But um, it's definitely something I'm still working on. Nice. nice. Yeah. And yet, so you're not even mixed at all. I was born in Manila. <laughs> you're, up. you're full, like both parents, full Filipino. Filipino, Holy yeah, yeah, generations of that. Yeah, we look at you and we're like, hey, this guy's Spanish or something. Like, yeah, but, but there is that, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, you look at the, the diaspora of, of Filipinos, yeah. Filipinas, and it's, you know, people are kind of mixed heritage from all over, all, yeah, yeah. all sorts of different things. It's in the history of the country. True, too. true. Um, so, yeah, I got that quite a bit too when I would go to. So, like, growing up in Burlington, mm -hmm. like I said, there were a handful of Filipinos that I knew. Yeah. I hung out with them. Yeah. But when I would go to Mississauga and Scarborough, I'd be like, whoa! <laughs> like <laughs> Too this, many. Like, this is where everybody <laughs> is? There's a, wow. a lot, eh? <laughs> and then, but then I'd hang with people there, and they'd be like... You're not Filipino. <laughs> you're not that's Filipino. What they'd like, you're on you're TV, not too. You're not Filipino. You're a host. That, you know, like, even before that, when I was in high school, they'd be like... You know. Yeah, yeah. Where'd you go to high school? In Burlington as well? In Burlington as well. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, cool, yeah. cool. Okay, so now for the media stuff, like... I'm sure you've noticed a huge change, right? With mm -hmm. Instagram now. Because mm -hmm. before, media was just straight TV or newspaper. For sure. And now, like, when, because when you were on YTV, there's no Facebook, no Instagram. No, none of that, not right? when I started. Yeah, yeah. And now that we have it, like, what, what do you see happening? Like, what, what do you, um, what's the difference with now and then, like, with the media stuff now? And do you see, like, more Filipinos booming now compared oh, to, like... 100%. Right. Well, it's a it's a bunch of different things, right? So for the first point, we're now the social media. Yeah. We get to see things like this, like what you guys are doing. Yeah. So you don't have a gatekeeper saying to you, uh, "That's an interesting idea, but uh, it's not relatable." Yeah. Right. Back then, that's what it would be. Yeah. And you need someone to to front all this money, and you need advertising dollars, da, 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 all that stuff. That is that still plays into it in a different way now, yeah. but you can be an individual. And create a huge platform like you've known that we've, we've that's the story of the last mm -hmm. five ten years yeah, yeah. of media is people as individuals or as groups creating things because they loved it or they were interested in it and there was no one saying to them that they couldn't or the people that said they couldn't they were like well i can't <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. i have the tools in front of me i have a computer i've got a microphone i've got a camera and we can make it happen yeah, yeah, right? yeah that's the biggest difference and then to the other thing about so we get more representation that way with people who are interested mm -hmm. to be able to just say, I want to tell my stories. Yeah, yeah. And we're learning a lot from a lot of different people, which is one of the most wonderful things about social media is when someone can go on social media and say, here is my culture. Yeah, here's yeah. what we wear. Here's how we, here's how we dance. Mm -hmm. Here's uh, the beautiful food that we eat. Here's our beautiful language. And people are receptive to learning 
that's the best version of it. I love that. Um, and so the other thing that's happening in like what we call maybe legacy media, like TV and movies and whatnot, mm-hmm. is it's that slow sort of like people from generations and generations and generations back just banging on doors constantly. And all of a sudden now there's cracks in the doors yeah. and now doors are opening. Yeah, and so yeah. you're seeing more people in bigger projects. You're even seeing people like, um, we were talking about Filipinos, mm-hmm. a lot of Filipinos on TV now, who get to say they're Filipino and get to have Tagalog in, the, like Spider-Man in, in No Way Home, oh, yeah, right? Yeah, when Lola yeah, was true. there and she's speaking Tagalog. True, I true. was in the theater and I was like, what? <laughs> like, is this happening right now? For real? <laughs> yeah, yeah. She yeah. just told him to get the spider web out of the corner. <laughs> right? like, I was just like, and, and so it's just stuff that we never would have thought of, at least, you know, when I was a kid growing up. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I kind of always just thought like, um, oh, you know, maybe some people will get there one day, we'll get our story sold, but now it's, it's like floodgates are open and it's wonderful. Wow, yeah. Yeah. You're right, you're right. And then you've won a few awards, right? Yes. I've seen that. Yeah. What, what were those for and how do you feel getting them? Um, so I have won three Canadian Screen Awards yep. in my career thus far. So the Canadian Screen Awards, if anybody is unaware, it's kind of like our version of the Golden Globes, nice. right? So they honor... Um, our best and brightest in all sorts of media, movies, television, online, uh, digital media. And so I won my first one ever as the host of The Next Star for YTV, which was a competition singing show that okay. we did all across Canada. So yeah. I was the host for a couple of seasons of that. I won for my first season as host. And then I won my last two with ET Canada. Nice. Reporting for our, you know, our ET Canada live digital segments, um, which has been a real... I know, it's been very cool to be able to be recognized in that way. Nice, nice. Things. Yeah. Wow. Just out of curiosity, we don't have to put this on camera or anything, but would you, you like ET better or YTV? Which one did you like working better? Well, I like working better. I, you know, it's funny that you asked that because I think about that. I don't see a better. Um, I like kind of like to see, the way I look at everything is sort of, I was doing a thing then and now I'm doing a thing now. True. And how can I make the thing I'm doing now as wonderful as the thing I was doing then? Mm-hmm. If I can't, then maybe I don't want to do it. True. So, uh, for the age that I was at growing up doing my TV, I started that when I was 22. Um, it was perfect. Mm-hmm. It was amazing. <laughs> it was like the best gig I could have ever dreamed of yeah, getting. Yeah, yeah. Um, we got to create our own stuff. We had fun every day. We got to put our in jokes in things. People were watching us, but they weren't like watching us. <laughs> yeah, like like, yeah. like the, the people above us weren't like, oh, you can't do that. It was oh. like, okay, go have fun. Oh, yeah. Make this thing. Wow. Um, uh, Sugar, Sugar Lynn Beard, yep, yep. right, Stephanie, Sugar Lynn Beard, Sugar and I um, uh, were a great team and we were starting off. I learned a lot from her because she was just like a wonderful, um, funny, talented person. Um, and we got along really well and we made a lot of really great things together. Nice. And over the years, I've worked with fantastic producers where I felt the same way about them. And then in the transition over to ET Canada, it was kind of about, well, but now we're talking about different things to a different audience. Um, we're not making, we're not joking around in the same way that we were, obviously. Yeah. But it became a different experience that I got to uh, get used to, and I'm s- still currently enjoying a lot nice. of a lot of trips out west to LA, a lot nice, of going nice. to New York, really sitting down like this and talking to very interesting people the yep, way that yep. I didn't get a chance to do when I was at YTV. True. So I don't know about better, mm-hmm. but I'm finding joy in this nice. in different ways that I had joy Just in that. Just as good as that. Yeah, for nice. sure. That's amazing. Yeah. So what is there a big difference you see in Filipinos in the States than you see here in Canada? Like, what's the biggest difference that you see with, within the Filipino community? I don't that know. That you see in the States? That... I think maybe because I go to L.A. more, it's just the number of Filipinos that are out there. Yeah. I suppose, but we have so many, like, there's a ton of us here. True, true. Right? And, like, I don't know about the difference, but the one thing I will say is that, um, you know, people say, you know, what do you have in common? Mm -hmm. So you're like, we're all into sneakers. Everyone's into sneakers. Yeah. We like the same sports team. Awesome. We like the same movies. Awesome. The amazing thing about Filipinos is that you can just be like, Filipino. And like, hey! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. (laughs) Right? Like, Like, literally, it's like, I pass to be like, hey, and then, and then they let you in, and then you, you talk about the things you have in common, yeah, yeah. talk about things you don't have in common. I literally nice. met a dude in, where was I? I was in like San Diego, and I was like at a hotel pool with my kids, and he was chilling there with his kids. <laughs> and we were kind of like looking at each other like, and I can't remember who said it first, but one of us was like, 
Are you Filipino? Yeah, yeah. And like, he goes, I remember this moment. I was like, yeah, I'm Filipino. I was born in Manila. He turned to his wife and he was like, yo, he's Filipino. <laughs> <laughs> and that, this is where? In the States? This is in this the States. In, yeah, yeah, this yeah. is in the States. And then we just like had a great day, like hanging out. Nice, nice. Right? And so that's what I feel like it's like. I don't know about the difference. It's more like the, that's that one thing that we have in common opens doors for us for, to connect to each other, which true. is amazing to me. Yeah, yeah, true, true. Wow. That's but that's how that's what happened with this, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're like, hey, I'm doing this thing. We're we're making this pl- platform for yeah, Filipinos. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to come aboard? And I was like, I trust you. <laughs> <laughs> trust. So yeah, here we go. I, do. I trust these. Right? Yeah, I trust these guys for that's real. It. <laughs> that's cool, man. You have any questions, Carlo? We're good. Go ahead. Oh, favorite Filipino foods. Okay. Um. Hmm. I'm a sweets guy, I like the sweets. <laughs> um, I like some pan de sosa. Mm. I like some polvoron. Mm. My mom does the most bomb leche flan. And oh, it's man, like, I got goosebumps. I got goosebumps you saying it's that. Dumb. It's so good. Every time my mom makes it, I take a picture and send it to, like there's a handful of people I send it the nice. picture to, just to be like, look what you're not getting. <laughs> right? Like It's like that. Yeah. Have you seen the process of how she makes it? Oh, I know how she makes she it. She strains it in but, a shirt, t-shirt, but, but and all I don't, that. Here's, here's what it is. So, like, even if she, even if she gave me the recipe, like, I wouldn't dare. Yeah, I feel you not. Right? Yeah, I'd be like, can't. okay, maybe I'll try to make it for my kids. Yeah, yeah. But like, even then, even if I did, I'd be like, listen, <laughs> your Lola's let you play. I never made one. this, okay? I never made it. That's yeah. hilarious, man. Yeah, I seen my grandma make it too, man, and she strains it with a t-shirt. Yeah, I've seen them do it. I'm like, oh, what is that? Yeah. It's for Leche Plan. It's, that's my old t-shirt that you're using right there. <laughs> Wait <laughs> a minute. I still want to wear that. <laughs> what else you got? Okay, yeah, there you go. Yeah, okay. So, uh, talking about advice for creators, it's, it's kind of always the same now. It's just like, find the thing that you really like to do, uh, something that you would enjoy spending your time doing. People say it's gotta be your passion. Mm-hmm. I don't know about your passion, um, because sometimes work can like taint your passion a little bit, yep, yep. right? Depending on how it goes for you. But something that you enjoy spending time doing, um, that it feels easy to do. And if you wanna put that message out in the world, that you have all the platforms to do it. Um, find good collaborators, people you trust, right? Mm-hmm. People that have that share a vision with you, either whether it's your art or their art or whatever it is, and just like full steam ahead, just go, give it. Feel that? It's yeah. Amazing. yeah, yeah. Most influential book you've read? Most influential book I've read. Um, Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball. Damn. Okay. Dragon Ball. Okay. <laughs> you know what? I it's. It's funny because I've always been like a champion for uh, comics and manga. And whenever people want to talk about books, like I love books, I love mm-hmm. reading. But when I was younger, I had a hard time really focusing on reading a book book. Mm-hmm. And even now, I got to really sit down to yeah, read a book yeah, book. Yeah. Um, and there are certainly books that I love and books that have been a big influence on me. I went to theater school, so I read a lot of Shakespeare, wow, right? Okay. The first... The first um, play ever read uh, of Shakespeare was Julius Caesar, and I loved King Lear. Uh, so all this stuff, but I always try, try to like big up my comics and big up my manga creators <laughs> because <laughs> honestly, like um, life lessons. You want to yeah. talk about life lessons about determination, yeah, right? Yeah. Dragon Ball. <laughs> you want to talk life lessons about se- about self sacrifice and and. Um, uh, doing things for the greater good, Spider-Man, true, right? Like it's, true. it's all in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it helped me to uh, actually like comic books, Spider-Man almost specifically, was it had, it helped teach me how to read and ta- taught me big concepts and big words and yeah, yeah, all yeah. that. So when, you know, when I had kids, I was like, obviously you're going to read, like you're going to read books. Yeah, yeah. My daughter is a voracious reader. She really? finishes a novel a month, wow. swear to God. But, I started them in comics. So wow. I was like, here, like words and pictures, like put it together. So that's nuts. Wow. Yeah. So that's I know cool, it right? sounds uneducated, <laughs> but think harder about it. Yeah. Dragon yeah, Ball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, favorite show on my TV. Favorite show on my TV. It depends on the era. Your era. My era. That you were hosting. Um, 
Hmm. Mine was Hey Arnold. Were you were doing Hey Arnold? Hey Arnold, right? we did Hey Arnold. Hey Arnold was a great show. Yeah, yeah. I'm always like curious if people know like the sort of low key shows that only lasted like a couple seasons. Like My Hometown. Okay. 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 My Hometown. I can't okay. believe you know that. That's crazy. Oh, but well, I have to know it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, but that was before you were hosting. That was before I was. That hosting. was way before. But when I started. I mean, I loved Reboot. Yeah. I grew up on oh, Reboot, man, Reboot too, so that was like, hard. that was it, right? Reboot was tough. Um, so when I was a kid, it was really, not even a kid, I think I was probably a teenager, I yeah, loved yeah. Reboot. Um, I was very excited when, when anime started coming over to North America, because mm -hmm. my brother, my brother is, how many years older am I? He's like 10 years older than me. I didn't almost. even know you have a brother, that's crazy. I have a brother and a sister. Wow. Uh, I'm the youngest of three, so my older brother is like almost 10 years older than me. Okay, wow. And... So he was a good influence and a bad influence. <laughs> but, you know, we used to watch, we used to go to, like, the video stores when you could rent, like, a cartoon for a dollar. Yeah, yeah. And when they had anime there, people didn't know what it was. So just because it was animated, they would put it in the kids' section. Mm. So I remember being in, like, grade five or six, my brother picked me up from school one day. Yeah. He said, like, guess what movie I got? I was like, what? And he goes, Akira. I was like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> but I was like, I'm on board. And we watched it and I was like, what am I watching? But um, so when, I, so I had been an anime fan from, you know, childhood. Yeah. So when that started coming over, when Dragon Ball came over, it was very exciting. It took forever to get into anything. Yeah. When we had this prog programming block called Bionics, which was in the evenings, like Gundam Wing was on there and Eureka mm. 7 was on there. That was very exciting for me. And that so was on YTV? Stuff. And that was on YTV. Oh, wow. In the evening. Nighttime, yeah. 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 Wow, that's crazy. So, so sorry, your favorite show is what then? Oh, yeah, no, TV. long, long, long. <laughs> um, that stuff, I mean, I would say really my favorite cartoon on YTV is, is Avatar Last Airbender. You were doing that? I think that was, that was on Saturday mornings when AJ Fry used to host. Jeez, I forgot about so that. So when guy. AJ was doing Crunch, they had Avatar. I was so jealous <laughs> because I think we would we would talk about what the programming split would be, and we might get Avatar like once a week, so maybe on a Tuesday or a Friday or something like that. But he'd get it every Saturday, and we get the second. Oh. So they'd premiere the episode on the Saturday, like because <laughs> we get the replay during the week. But that one, yeah, like again, shout out to. Dante Bosco. <laughs> oh, that's but like too, right? Avatar: The Last Airbender is maybe, in my opinion, yeah, yeah, the best cartoon series produced in North America. True, true. What are you watching Sorry, right Sponge now? Bob. <laughs> I love you, but Ang's my guy. Um, what am I watching right now? Uh, Series-wise, yeah, yeah. anything, 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 wise? anything. What? Well, I'm hanging out with my kids a lot. Yeah. So, and they're. I'm oh, sorry. How old are your kids? My son is 12, 12 and my daughter's okay. 10. Nice, nice. So they watch a lot of anime. Nice. So we've been watching a, a ton of One Piece. My son watches One Piece a lot. You had a son too? And he's 11, yeah, he's 11. <laughs> See, nobody told me you had a son. Yeah, I do. I think it's I'm funny. the only dad in here, right? There you go. Well, oh, us two, I mean. Us listen, two, yeah, yeah. they'll hang out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> how, how far into One Piece are you guys? He's thousands of episodes in. He's man. like, I don't really, have time to watch that. I'm not gonna lie. Time. But I have he, a friend who is a fully grown human adult male. He's like almost fifty. Yeah. So <laughs> I know. I know a lot of his age, but he's in his forties. And he he watches the show in one point two time speed or one point like, well, oh, like okay. one and a half yeah. time speed, so he can get through so it. All. He, okay, yeah. So that's smart. And he legit came up to me one day. and was like, I finished one piece. No way. Like he just hit a home run. I swear it's still like, going right now. Isn't it? Yeah, like he, yeah. but he finished what is available. Oh yeah, <laughs> like what is currently available. He got through it. And I was like, "How did you do that?" That's insane. Like, how man. as a as a grown up human with kids did you finish it all? Yeah, like, yeah. I just find the time. <laughs> I'm dedicated. <laughs> anyway, so we watched a lot of One Piece, Naruto, Boruto. Um, my daughter's watching the show called uh, Polar Bear Cafe on Crunchyroll, which oh, is wait. literally about a polar bear that has a cafe. Very self-explanatory. <laughs> it's super cute. <laughs> I don't know. It's a very cozy show. <laughs> that sort of thing. But yeah, that's what we're doing. That's hilarious. Wow. What else you got, Carlo? Are you still in contact with Sugar? This guy has a crush on her. This guy has a crush on her. Did you want? Did you want the contact with her? <laughs> Is that what you're looking for? I think I saw her on Asian Avenue one time. Actually. Hey. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, she's good. We are... We talk to each other online. Nice. When I'm down in LA, I try to my best to, to visit her. 
the last time we were together in person, it was actually funny. It was over the holidays. Was it last year or two years ago? She was in town. Um, and it was just like a really good catch up. Just like she came over to where I live, right? Which is like way, way far out from here. Um, and uh, we went out, hung out by the lake, went and got, grabbed a meal and just like caught up on life and basically mm-hmm. like not even work stuff. Yeah. Just like, how are you? What nice. is life like for you right now? Because nice. that's, you know, that's the level of friendship yeah, yeah. that we've got going God, decades back now, right? Wow. So yes, we still stay in touch and she's good. She's a great human right. and she's doing good. What does she have to know? What does she do now? She lives in LA. She's, um, she had been doing some voiceover work. She has been doing some acting as well. Nice, nice. Um, a lot of behind the scenes stuff as well. So just in it nice. and very dedicated to her art, very dedicated to um, humans, very dedicated to justice. Nice. Just a good person. Nice. nice. Yeah. And are you still drawing and tap dancing and stuff like that? Or? I am still oh, drawing yeah? and tap dancing. No way. And it's funny that because those are the things that I did most as a kid. And now that I have kids, it's what we sort of do together sometimes oh, wow. too. Nice. So like, I don't dance professionally anymore. I haven't danced yeah. professionally since I was in my 20s. However, my daughter and I danced in the kitchen. <laughs> She's an artist. And so we, um, we draw things together. We create things together, nice. she and I. Um, and she's very interested in, uh, like we watch artists on TikTok and we discuss technique and, and I, and wow. I show her things and she tries them out. And, um, I mean, I'm, I'm obviously I'm her dad, so I'm proud of her, but she's good. Nice. She's really nice. good. Wow. Yeah. It's cool. Man. Carlo, you got anything? John? That's it. What else you got? What yeah. else do you want to learn? How, how is life right now? Life life good? What's your son doing? My son, he's hooping a lot, man. He's a basketball player, man. Yeah, he's in the league. Yeah, he's, he's in, in a lot of leagues. A lot yeah. of leagues, yeah. Filipino leagues, actually. I was going to say, that's why. He's in the Filipino that's leagues. Why. And he's also in OBA, all the other leagues. Okay. And all that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, he does all that. Have you ever been involved in any of like, those? My, my nephew used to yeah? play. Okay. My okay. nephew is 14 now, but he used to play when he was younger. I so I would go to the games just to watch. Okay, nice, nice. Just to watch. Are you guys going to go to CCYA? To the, he, yeah, yeah, he's in that. He's in. Yeah, that. he's in yeah, it. Yeah, he, I think it's at Hoop Dome, right? Or mm, not, not one of those mm, places. Let's see yeah. Jeremy Lin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Simu, yeah. Hoop it up with Simu. Yeah. Yeah, man, that's cool. That would be a good time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Well, that's Filipino. Hold on, sorry. I have my phone here. Let me just. You know, I told a lot of my cousins I was interviewing you. Yeah. And they're going crazy. A okay. Lot of, <laughs> a lot of them are still jealous that you got their uh, that position over them because some of them tried out for YTV. Oh yeah. The same yeah. time as you did? It is it's it's pretty funny. Like I didn't going back to that, yeah. I had no expectations at all. Again, because I was like, I'm not a comedian and I knew comedians. Yeah. Um and I knew uh, uh improv artists. And so, you know, there was a stretch of time when I would be at auditions for commercials or whatever. And dudes would look at me sideways a little bit. Yeah, they'll be like, I'd fuck be like, this guy. For <laughs> like, real, they'll be like that, man. But I'm sorry. like, yo, I love that guy. I'm doing I love that sorry. guy, man. <laughs> but yeah, it's funny how many guys you won that over from, man. A lot of, I guess, I'm assuming a lot of Filipinos tried out for that because all the guys that were like, yo, I tried out for that. They're all Filipino. I guess so. <laughs> yeah, well, what's kind of cool, I don't want to burp in your microphone. I just did a little bit. Yeah. Um, what's cool is that starting with Phil, who's a friend of mine, yeah. I adore Phil. Um, he started kind of like a legacy of that at YTV. And I, it was unspoken. It was never like, we're always going to hire a Filipino guy. But what I always loved is that they always hired a Filipino guy. Yeah. I just right? noticed that right now, and actually. It was like, so like every, so Phil did it for a long time. I did it for a long time. Um, there was a young lady named Tyra who did it for a while. Okay. Alex. Yeah. Alex, right? Yeah. Alex was on there uh, right before they closed up shop. Yeah. And so that's kind of one thing that I'm always, I'm kind of proud to be, Part of that legacy of yeah. is that whether that was, it wasn't their mandate to say we're going to hire, you know, these people, mm-hmm. Filipino people, um, but they did. And I look at it two ways. Um, number one, it was great for representation. Yes. Uh, because kids got to see themselves. Yep. Uh, and number two, the Filipinos were talented enough and they got it. Yeah. Like, we're the ones that got it. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't just Filipinos that auditioned. Yeah. Right? Everybody auditioned. True. But we're the ones that got it. And I, I can always say, like, yeah. Nice, like, nice. Our community of people, talented, smart, hardworking, yep. um, let's represent on TV. 
Nice. How did your family and friends react to you being on YTV? Um, my friends would always, I mean, they troll me a lot in public. Yeah. In right? public. Like when we'd be at, we used to go uh, spend a lot of time on Spahana. Nice. Having dim sum, late night, whatever. <laughs> and like anytime someone would come by, you know, a little inebriated and would be like, you know who you look like? You look like the guy from blah, da, 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 da. And, and my friends would have a lot of fun with that because they'd always nice. be like, oh, yeah, so he gets that all the time. That guy's a real asshole. <laughs> <laughs> and they'd really play into that. So God bless you guys. Um, my, my parents were like, cool. They just were happy, I think, that I was working. Nice, nice. And that they were doing something, that, excuse me, that I was doing something that I enjoyed. Uh, but it was never like a big deal to them. Really? They were, what about your cousins and stuff? They were like showing off to people, oh, anything like okay. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, my cousins all played it really cool. Nice. Like, I, I think really lucky that way that nobody was really gassing me up or anything like that. Wow, really, eh? Um, such that I would think I was a bigger deal than I was, mm. right? Um, I always kind of like to play it cool as well. Yeah, yeah. Like, I like, I, I enjoy what I do. Yep, yep. But, you know, I don't want to be, you know. But, um, no, my friends would, would troll me, which was always really great. Um, my family, they got a kick out of it. <laughs> yeah, my yeah. cousins got a kick out of it, but they weren't calling me up being like, yo, can you get me tickets to, uh, <laughs> hey, I know you know so-and-so. Can you get me his number? That's like, good, man. It that's wasn't good. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's good. Yeah. That's like the Filipino humble type of mentality. It, was, though, uh, it, right? it really was. Yeah, 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 that's cool, man. Wow. I think they, they knew. They were like, he has it in him yeah. to be too high on himself. True. So we got to keep moving. <laughs> you have any funny, like, starstruck moments where a fan sees you and they're, they're, they're like, oh, what the hell? Um, yeah, you know, it's, it's weird. Like, someone asked me not too long ago, like, hey, how often do you get recognized? I said, well, if I'm in the city every day. Okay. But it's nice. Like, it's not a weird thing. Like, okay, people nice. will often come up and just be like, oh, wow, I watched you on TV. Like, yeah, How are you yeah. doing? What are you doing now? Yeah, and yeah. we'll have a conversation because I'm also interested. I want to know what you're doing. Nice, <laughs> like, nice. Like, what are you up to? Yeah, what do yeah. you like? Like, that sort of thing. So people have always been, I've always felt lucky in the way that when people approach me, they're kind of real with it, which mm -hmm. is really great. Um, I have had moments, of course, where people are a bit wild. Like, mm -hmm. they act, that that way, which I never like really understood. Starstruck, like, yeah. Whoa, Carlos. Well, because I, TV. yeah, because <laughs> I never really had that with anybody growing up. True. I think I mentioned Gregory Hines earlier. Yeah, I got a chance to meet him, but the first time I ever met him, that was the only time I had been that close to someone that I really kind of like looked up to. Mm -hmm. And so I, the Star Trek, I didn't know what to say. Mm. But I, whenever someone would come up to me. With that, like, wow, kind of thing, I'd be like, hey, like, I'm trying to really, like, yeah, yeah, down, yeah. Like, neutralize hey. the situation. Yeah. <laughs> that sort of That's thing. That's hilarious. Yeah. Okay, so nothing too crazy then. Where do you go for Filipino food in LA and Toronto? Um, you know, there's here, La Mesa. Ooh. Uh, La Mesa was a spot. Uh, yep. You were there? Les. Yeah, yeah, of course. Amazing guy. Les, <laughs> amazing guy. So, less, less. Uh, is a friend of the family as well. Like, he's a friend of my sister's. And so, when we found out Les was opening the spot, we were like, we're there. A hundred percent. Like we, So, we showed up. Um, and, yeah, I, I loved every sort of iteration of that spot. Like, such a, such a great way. Sort of like the idea of, like, elevating comfort food that we love, that we know mm -hmm. and love. And also, making it interesting in a way like, like plating it in a way that people that are not familiar with Filipino food could go, oh, okay, maybe I want to try that because people like the thing that's elevated. Sort of yeah, thing. yeah. But it would be La Mesa. I haven't had a chance to get to BB's yet. Oh, okay. Um, so, sorry. That's a good one. I'm still trying to get to <laughs> It's all good. It's all good. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it's really just like my mom's house. Mm. Uh, my mom's, my mom's good house. Really. Good answer. Good like, answer. That, that's really where it's at. And then when I'm in Vancouver... Uh, it's the same thing. It's like my, my Lola's place. And then there's a spot that we go to just to get sweets, like I was saying to mm -hmm. you, like uh, a Goldilocks Bakery <laughs> in Vancouver. Y'all know Goldilocks? Yep. Yeah. We have it here, right? Oh, you have it in Vancouver. Wait a minute. Where is it here? I swear we have one here. Oh, you sure? Here. Goldilocks? Oh. Okay, because that was about, like, if you... <laughs> I was about to be <laughs> like, let's wrap it up. <laughs> <laughs> Goldilocks. <laughs> For real. But no, no, in, in Vancouver, that's where we get all that stuff. That's so, cool, yeah. Man. 
And then what about LA? Um, Any spot in particular in LA? You know what? I, I haven't been taken to one in LA, to be perfectly oh. honest yet. No way. So, yeah, I feel kind of... I hadn't I hadn't really thought about it that way. Wow. Now we got to find a spot. <laughs> when are we going? In July. This guy. July. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah, my education has been neglected in that way, <laughs> uh, unfortunately. But I know there's tons of good spots. Okay? Pick up Ron Jossel, all three. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. It's hilarious. Um, yeah. Uh, in New York, there's Jeepney. Mm. Uh, so, and Jeepney is a spot, too. Jeepney's great. I, I hope it is still around. Is it in Queensland? Yeah. What's your morning routine look like? My morning routine? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so it's funny you bring this up. I'm trying to get on like a real grown up, like let's do some, let's get up in the morning and like cold, whatever, expo- like all this stuff. Ice like, like get up, get up early and like expose yourself to cold and then be outside in the sun. Like I'm trying to do this stuff. Nice. I, I'm not, it's not working. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's not, I'm not consistent with it. Like my routine is, so, you know, at the end of the day, like the kids are in bed, I have time to myself after 10 p.m. Mm-hmm. People think I'm crazy, but I like to exercise at night. So I exercise like 10 right. p.m. Then I put a little time in Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, then I put a little time in Street Fighter. And then, <laughs> right? And then it's like one in the morning. And I'm like, should have gone to bed earlier. <laughs> so it's like one in the morning, I get up at seven, whatever, get the kids ready, um, and get ready to go to work. But ideally, if you're asking for my ideal uh, morning routine, I would, as a better human being, get up at six in the morning and then like be there when the birds are chirping first thing <laughs> and make a full <laughs> breakfast for my family and then have time to read an actual book before I get in the car and go to work. Uh, but it's not panning out. We'll, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out eventually. Well, yeah. when you get into the cold ice about stuff? Wim Hof? Oh, it's Was literally it just TikTok. People oh, like, just TikTok. You should try it. I'm like, okay, I'll try it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Wim Hof too. Wim, Wim Hof, Hof like right? yeah, breathing. Yeah. All the Wim Hof breathing and all that yeah, stuff. I'm yeah, like, okay, yeah. that sounds cool. Um, it's real stuff, man. That stuff is real. I does think. it work for you? It works for me. You yeah. do it? I do it often. Yeah, yeah. I sometimes will be like in a nice hot shower, like really comfortable. And be like, ah. Yeah. And in the last five seconds, be like, ah. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> And then like. And then that's that's my version. Of it. Like, that's good. Okay, it's good enough. Mm, that's good, good enough, enough for man. Me. That's good enough. Yeah. <laughs> what else? Yeah. Good. Wrap it. Good. Anything else you want to elaborate on? Talk about what you, what, um, what's coming next for you. I will say we are, uh, you know, with ET Canada. There's stuff we're doing all the time, but I'm particularly proud of June specifically because with Filipino Heritage Month, um, we're shining a spotlight on creators and uh, actors, performers. Whether they're in North America or the Philippines, we got a great um, interview with SB19, which is a boy band nice. out of the Philippines. Um, we're at the Billboard Awards a couple years ago. A great journey for those guys. Uh, have an interview with them that's just recently went up. Just had a chat the other day with my good friend Eric Bowser, who's the voice of Bugs Bunny. Also, just prolific, a voice actor in so many things. So, like, Name a TV show or a movie, and you're like, he's in it. We're constantly watching shows in my house, <laughs> and I'm with my kids. And I'd be like, Eric's in that. That's crazy. Eric's in that show. So we just had a chat with him, and that'll be published very soon online at EastCanada.com and on our YouTube probably. So um, that's what I'm particularly proud of right now. Nice, nice. Uh, what we're doing with that, and of course, lots of interviews. I'm um, having a great time. Nice, nice. Yeah. All right, we're good. It's good. Wrap it up. We're good. <laughs>